What's poppin' gamers? There's a certain hero terrorizing the meta right now across all skill brackets. If you're playing mid, she's going to harass better than you and ruin your lane. If you're playing carry, she's going to gank you better than your team can gank the enemy tower and ruin your game. And if you're playing support, well, get ready to get deleted in a second from her burst damage and make you uninstall the game. It was about time this powerhouse got an arcana, and so she did during this TI's battle pass. Queen of Pain's new arcana, the Eminence of Ristol, does not only expand on her Dota 2 lore, but also ties in Underlords and Artifact. But before we talk about her arcana, let's cover the basics of her Dota 2 lore and her relationships and some trivia. Once there was a king ruling the kingdom of Elves, who was so determined to fulfill his eccentric desires that he had his dungeons of demonologists summon him a succubus from hell. This would be considered inappropriate if it were to come out to the public that a king such as himself was into getting tormented by a demon, so he tried to keep it a secret. The demon that would eventually get bound to his service turned out to be Akasha the Queen of Pain, who he named his secret queen. As a succubus, she fulfilled her role well, resulting in the king abandoning his duties in favor of spending time getting abused. Since she was runebound not to kill him, she would only bring him to the brink of death, so she never threatened his life directly. However, the king's obsession with the pleasures she brought him eventually resulted in him getting an early retirement when he was thrown out from the Towers of Invocations, likely from the people in court he had neglected. Now with his death, the demoness was freed to torment the world and stomp pubs. A succubus is a type of female demon from folklore across many different cultures traced back all the way to medieval times. The male version is called an incubus. Succubi typically appear in the dreams of men, draining their life energy by seducing them and, you know, birds and bees and the kind of stuff that gets you demonetized on YouTube. The popular modern depiction of a succubus, including the one of Queen of Pain, is an attractive seductress but in the past they were more often seen as frightening and more demonic. You would assume men would avoid partaking in any form of activity with such a creature, but like our late King of Elves in Dota 2, you can actually find forums online right now with advice on how you can summon one for yourself. In some legends, succubi can apparently collect the almond milk of their male human victims and then have their male incubi counterparts use that to impregnate human women. This was, back then, meant to explain why some offspring sometimes turned out deformed. It's very interesting to me how such a specific story about female demons visiting men in their dreams occurred across so many different cultures that couldn't communicate with one another, and one explanation is a combination of sleep paralysis and wet dreams. This is also an explanation for why some people today claim to be abducted by and prodded and experimented on by aliens. Sleep paralysis is a very scary condition that has been the cause of many superstitions among people for good reason. It causes you to be awake during your sleep, but unable to move or speak. You can also happen to hallucinate and get incredibly frightened. So if you're some pious, god-fearing man from the 13th century and you hallucinate a demoness at night, it's not hard to imagine that turning into a legend such as the one about the succubus. Queen of Pain's name, Akasha, is likely a reference to the 2002 movie The Queen of the Damned, and a novel series the film is based on, The Vampire Chronicles. Akasha is here the original vampire, called the Queen of the Damned. Her relationships in Dota 2 are mostly superficial. The more romantic male heroes will often flirt with her. My lady of pain, I adore you. Oh, Queenie, in another life we'd have been soulmates! I just know it! I could show you the meaning of pain, oh queen! And Ostarion the Wraith King especially has taken a liking to her. Oh, queen of pain, if I had flesh, I would let you torment it. I regret that as a wraith, I can no longer feel pain. My queen, oh queen of pain, I still can't feel your touch. I would that you had joined me as my queen. You and Austerion would make a hell of a power couple. Some heroes comment on how her attire maybe isn't suited for battle. You came to a battle wearing that? That's no way to protect your vitals. Do not take this the wrong way, but your armor falls uh, somewhere short of practical. If you feel at ease, prancing around in your unmentionables, I'm not stopping you. Her loud abilities are subject to a few comments such as... My blades made you sing. 
Not listening, not listening, not listening. What's wrong, Queenie? Cat got your tongue. And especially Naga Siren considers Quapa a musical rival. Your song was no match for mine. I never did like your voice. What a diva. Quap herself likes teasing Anti-Mage. Oh, Anti-Mage. I'll make you break your vows. She also similarly says this when killing the pious Omni Knight. It feels so good to be bad. And more innocent heroines like Enchantress and Crystal Maiden. Enchantress. How little you know, you poor, plain thing. Crystal Maiden. Are you really, I wonder? And her response to Legion Commander's comment about her choice of armor comes when she kills her and says this. That's why I'm queen and you're nothing. So that's Akasha, the Queen of Pain. Now let's go through her brand new comic, Ascension. Do you want to know what I really love? It's that first little moment when they realize this isn't a game. Are you ready for your moment? <laughs> oh, did that hurt? <laughs> it starts off with her dissatisfaction with her current life. Yes, she is the queen of pain in our earthly world above, but among the royals of hell she is only known as the sister of a certain Bakor. There is an institution among demons known as the Court of Bristol, where the demon lords amass power that influence both the Seven House and the Mortal Plane. For example, during the main story of Artifacts at One, Rick sold his soul to Shadowfiend to try and turn the tides of a hopeless battle between him, Legion Commander and Sorla Khan. Not many specifics are known about the Court of Ristol, other than that we know it consists of Shadowfiend, Underlord, Queen of Pain's brother, and formerly a new character called Nogue. We don't know if Ristol is a place or a person or something else entirely, but in my imagination, Ristol is like the one true ultimate demon king, and the demon lords of his court serve him by gathering him souls. The Court of Ristol are also, in my theory, the legal authority of hell, sentencing demons who break the rules, such as Terrorblade. But anyways, let's get on with the comic. We learn that the current three court leaders are allies and their powers within the Seven House seems to be growing, much to the distress of Bikor's sister, Queen of Pain. She dreams of not only ruling the mortals, but also her home so she can escape her smug brother's scrutiny. Basically, she's being a competitive, jealous sibling who doesn't just want to prove herself unequal to her brother, but surpass him. To acquire the means of her quest, she seeks out the former demon lord, Nog. Lore nerds have been familiar with him for a while before this new arcana already, because he is mentioned in Artifact and he's one of the unused characters in Drew Wolf's artwork of an abandoned Valve game. As you can see, almost all of these characters have already been added to the Dota IP games, or at least hinted towards. Vanessa is a new character introduced in Artifact, who is quick-witted and fascinated with the occult and forbidden, such as demonology, necromancy and chronomancy, aka time magic. She somehow managed to trick Nog into serving her as her bodyguard. As the cartoon continues, Quap explains to Nog what happened when he was exiled. Shadowfiend, Underlord and Bakor seized the opportunity to work as three instead of four and brought Nog's powerful clan down. Nog's reaction was of course one in distress, because he wanted to still be able to return to Hell when he one day eventually wasn't bound to Vanessa anymore. But for now, that was impossible. So Akasha instead proposed a different solution. Nog would give her the lands and power of his clan in exchange for her promise to avenge his honor by taking down his enemies. And now, with the combined power of herself and Nog's, Queen of Pain's scheme starts to take over both the mortal and abyssal plane. Okay, so along with the comic, she also has a new voice pack with Arcana. The monologue tells the same story, so in case you missed anything, here's a summary in her own words. What's not to love about the mortal realm? Plenty to see, plenty to kill, and hells, some of the best screamers. But sometimes a girl's gotta go home, and a lot can change. 
Time passes differently down there. Influence abandoned is influence lost. And, in my brother's case, finders keepers. My brother, Bakor, a more wretched demon you will not meet. He barely crosses the bar. But, in the court of Ristul, he has won much favor of late. While I enjoyed my time away, he made new friends and eliminated a host of foes. He has powerful allies now, and it seems they have grand plans. But none of those plans, I gathered, include me. So, I guess it's time to misbehave. It's amazing what one can find in Weeping Rose. If you look past the useless Arcanists and Seers, there are some real treasures. Look hard enough, one might even find Nog. He who, like I once was, is bound to another. But Nog's star falls even further than mine. All but forgotten by the demon lords, by those like my brother. My enemies are now Nog's as well, his former allies, and they have taken much from him. But I am no longer bound to serve. I can still hold sway in the court of Ristul. I can take back what has been lost. So, as demons do, we struck a bargain, and the measure of Nog's power flows through me now. Let Nevermore gloat about the soul of his pet Vool, and Vrogros plan his assaults. Let Bacor laugh and play Master of Ceremony for all the other demons to his black heart's content. In time, I will come for all of them. In time, I will be queen of all that is above and below. So before we end the video, here's a few voice lines between Queen of Pain and Underlord. The first ones are from Rogos to Akasha, and this was years ago. If they had already planned this future rivalry back then, color me impressed. I bring pain beyond your wildest dreams. I think you liked that. If you want worse, just say the word. You've been bad. And Queen of Pain's response in her new Arcana, I personally think is Valve joking to the lore nerds. There has been a lot of heated debates about whether or not Underlord and his people are demons who live in hell, or they are just subterranean mortals that look very grotesque. In my eyes, you are not even a real demon. Decree or no decree? This confirms that they are in fact demons, but Akasha is reluctant to accept it. Oh, by the way, my boy Methunder is now making lore content on YouTube, so if you want more Dota 2 lore, and you've watched all of Slack's Lorgasm, you've watched all of my videos, Methunder is now also gonna start posting lore videos, and he made his first video about Ogre Magi's Arcana the other day. If you like lore, I think you would love this video, and I can't wait to see what Methunder has for us in the future. Make sure you go over there and subscribe. So that's it for this video, hope to see you around, until then, peace.